Good morning, Detective. Sorry, Shane. Good morning. Um, can you briefly introduce yourself to the jury this morning? Good morning. My name is uh, Sergeant Joseph Button. Is that microphone on? Just a, what was the name? Bunting, B U N T I N G. You're tall, so you raise it up. A little red light on? Yes, it is. Okay. And, Sergeant, um, briefly describe where you work and what you do. I've been employed with the Santa Cruz County Sheriff's Office for a little over 22 years. I'm currently assigned to the patrol division uh, for the past year. Walk us through your career with the Santa Cruz County Sheriff's Department. Okay. I started with the Sheriff's Office in February 6th of 02. Uh, from there, I went to the Basic Police Academy at Carlotta, which is in Coolidge, Arizona. Upon graduation from the Basic Police Academy, I went to the field training program at the Sheriff's Office, which consisted of uh, 12 weeks. Uh, upon going through the FTO program uh, during my tenure, um, I was assigned to the Patrol Division. Uh, from there, I went into the K-9 uh, program. I was K-9 officer for five years. Um, from there, about three years on, I became the field training officer myself, which in turn trains the new officers coming out of the academy. Um, continued through that, uh, became a SWAT operator. I've been a SWAT operator for 19 plus years, uh, gone up the ranks. I'm currently the SWAT commander for the department. Um, I became a corporal. Uh, on patrol for probably five years into my career. Um, continued on patrol. The majority of my uh, career has been on patrol. Um, from there, I uh, became a phlebotomist. Um, I wanted to become a general instructor for the Sheriff's Office. Um, became a uh, firearms instructor for the department. Uh, taught at uh, academy level and um, at the uh, for the department. I went on to become a rifle instructor uh, for the department. I've had, I have other qualifications through my general instructor uh, certification. Uh, from there, continued on through patrol, uh, became a uh, motor unit. I just I was able to ride the motor unit for the department. Um, in 2016, uh, I, I left the patrol division and became a detective. Uh, so I was a detective for just over six years for the department. And then in April of last year, I was promoted to sergeant and then reassigned back to patrol. And that's where I am currently. Thank you, Sergeant. And you briefly touched on firearms and rifle instructor. What, is that, what does that include? It's additional training uh, to become a, a firearms instructor. You first start at uh, basically the handgun, shotgun level, and then after that you become a rifle instructor um, through the through the state, and then that in turn I can now teach uh, firearms for the department, and I have taught at uh, the academy level for cadets at the academy on how to shoot a gun, proper you know handling of the weapon and stuff like that. So that would include, would it include safety? Correct. Operation? Correct. And you said you handled weapons of, from handguns? Handguns, shotguns, and rifles. How about semi-automatic weapons? Yes, we do. That's what we use on patrol. In, in your tenure at the Sheriff's Department, honing in, especially on your detective years, um, what kind of cases did you work? Um, unfortunately, uh, being a detective, uh, we mostly deal with a lot of sexual assault type uh, crimes at the department. Um, in my tenure, I've had probably a dozen or so homicide investigations at the patrol level, uh, moving up into uh, criminal investigations division, um, homicides, murder, suicides, um, uh, suspicious death investigations, uh, fraud cases, uh, and so on. And I, I don't want to assume, but in those 12 or so homicides and a few of those murder-suicides, was, was there a weapon involved? Yes. In all of those? Uh, not all of them, uh, but majority of them, yes. And what kind of weapon was generally used? Um, I've had rifles, handguns, um, uh, 
Rifle is a handgun. I'm going to direct your attention to this investigation. Were you called to assist in this investigation? I was originally called on January 30th. Uh, I was actually out sick that day, so I didn't actually start uh, helping out with the investigation until the 31st. You came out the next day, January 31st? Correct. And what were your respons what responsibilities were you tasked with on the 31st? Um, mostly I, I assisted the other detectives. Um, when I came into work that morning, um, I was directed to gather some information for a secondary search warrant, um, which uh, I assisted with Detective Ainsa, uh, getting all that information. And then once that was obtained, uh, going out to the Kelly range. Okay, so you said second search warrant, so you were aware of a first search warrant already being conducted? Uh, correct. The, the first search warrant was the, the day of the incident on the 30th. All right, and you go back on the 31st the next day? Correct. Do you know what the what the purpose of the second search warrant was? Uh, it was brought to my attention at that time when officers and deputies were were on scene. Um, there was two outbuildings, I guess like a, a, some type of barn in a smaller building uh, that we were going to uh, obtain a search warrant for. Uh, and then while at the sheriff's office, uh, I learned that uh, the rifle in question uh, was not found on the previous day. So the, were you aware that uh, an AK-47 was found on the first search warrant? Correct. And that AK-47 was not the same weapon as identified by another officer? That's correct. And so one of the goals of the second search warrant was to search for the AK-47 recognized by the officers? Correct. Walk us through that second search warrant. Would walk, walk the jury through the scene and how that occurred. What would you do? Okay. Um, once the search warrant was obtained, uh, myself and other uh, detectives went back out to the Kelly Ranch. Um, upon our arrival, um, we met with Mrs. Kelly. Uh, at that time, uh, we learned that she was actually going to be leaving um, to go stay at her friend's house somewhere. Um, I mentioned uh, when she left, if there's any weapons in, in her vehicle, she did uh, state there was a weapon in her vehicle. Um, I asked, because uh, there was two vehicles on the property, uh, she pointed out that the second vehicle was Mr. Kelly's. I asked if there was a weapon inside Mr. Kelly's uh, vehicle, and she said there was. I brought this information uh, to Detective Ainsley's attention. Uh, we modified uh, the search warrant uh, through the phone uh, with the judge. Um, upon uh, Doing that, uh, we retrieved two more. It was uh, uh, two more handguns, one out of each vehicle, uh, from Mr. Kelly and Mrs. Kelly's vehicle. From from there, once that was uh, done and uh, both vehicles were searched, uh, we went down to those outbuildings. The it's a large barn, and come to find out, I guess the second smaller uh, smaller house was a pump house for the for the ranch. Um, those were probably. Uh, I'm guessing maybe a little over 100 yards or more down past uh, the main house. Um, we went down there, searched uh, both places. Uh, nothing of evidence was, was found at either location. Uh, once we cleared there, we went uh, back to where the, the scene was located. Um, I'm going to pause you right there, so just so we have an understanding. Your first on scene, you were searching cars, pump house, and a barn. That's correct. And now next you're moving to where you were told the victim was located. That's correct. And when you got to where the victim was located, did you notice anything about the terrain, vegetation? I did. What did um, you notice? It was a uh, desert environment. There was uh, sage grass or sage brush, if, if, if you want to call it. Um, there was a small two track uh, leading kind of up in the northeast direction. Um, big enough, maybe, maybe a little bit big enough for a car, but maybe like a small tractor or something to, to go up in uh, there. Um, I was then pointed out uh, where the decedent was actually located. Um, there was still uh, dried blood um, on the grass of where he was. So we, I was able to see where, where he was found. Um, from there, uh, we began to... I'm going to pause, so I don't want to get you too far into this story. 
So when you are on scene, you see the vegetation. How high is this vegetation? Do you recall? Um, I'd be guessing I'm probably shin height for for me in different places. You're a tall man, right? I'd be like knee height for me. <laughs> so maybe I'd say maybe a foot or so. Let me ask you about the the, the vegetation around. Was there any signs in from what you recall? Any signs of a struggle? I did not observe any type of signs of any type of struggle. Uh, I didn't see any type of uh, <coughs> footprint or shoe prints in the in the dirt uh, around. So you're at the scene. What was your goal when you're at the the scene where the victim's body was located? What's the what's the purpose of being there? Um, other detectives and myself, we began to search uh, in around that immediate area. At that time, we did bring out a metal detector. Um, I didn't use a metal detector that, that day. Uh, another detective started searching for any type of uh, physical evidence. We're looking for the bullet, looking for shell casings. Um, was, was any found? Uh, no. But I, do, I do need to go back a little bit because the one thing that I did before we went down to search the house. Sure, let me ask you, did you do anything before you searched the house? Yes, we did. Um, I, I apologize. Um, for my knowledge of what happened, because I wasn't there the first day, um, Detective Vainza actually brought me into the back patio of the Kelly residence and showed me the location of where the, the, the canine found the first spent shell casing. Um, okay. when I'm going to pause. So we, we, we got to get our chronology correct, right? What was going on? So you first arrive on scene. The, the first thing that Detective Vainza does with you is what? Um, he took me in the backyard because I wanted to kind of familiarize myself with the scene so I can start painting the picture. Um, and at that point, he actually uh, pointed out where the first shell casing was located. The shell casing located by a canine from ATF? That's correct. All right. And then from there, you search cars, barn out, barn. Well, and just, just before walking or driving down there, um, I, I did a visual search of the backyard uh, looking at the house um, that... The Kelly house, especially in the, in the back, uh, has an overhang uh, with some peel poles. Peel poles are just basically the wood poles peeled with the, or, or have the bark peeled off, um, decorative peel poles. I was looking at the house, looking at the, uh, the peel poles. There's several mes mesquite trees in the backyard. Again, looking for any type of bullet strikes, looking for um, impacts in both directions, coming from where the scene was uh, alleged to be at and to uh, see was from from the back porch looking out to, into the desert. I was looking to see if I could find any type of uh, evidence, and I could not at that time. Okay, so we just I just want to make sure we get the sequence of events correct. Your first thing you did was Ienza shows you Detective Ienza shows you where the canine found a shell casing. That's correct. And then you did a a perimeter review of the scene, looking for bullet strikes and so forth. That's correct. And the next thing you did, I will make sure this is correct, next thing you did was a search of cars, pump house, and barn. That's correct. And then you went to where the victim's body was located. That is correct. Okay, and now this is where we pick up our story. You have metal detector out there searching for spits, shell casings and a projectile. That's correct. And how many, do you recall how many metal detectors you had? Uh, at that point, we only had one metal detector. Um, another detective, um, was utilizing that metal detector, and then uh, I began to uh, again search um, for any type of evidence from where the decedent was, kind of walking back towards Mr. Kelly's residence. Um, there's a lot of mesquite trees of different sizes, um, bigger, majority of them were all kind of medium sized to so small. Um, as you walk from where the decedent was back to the Kelly residence, um, I did locate a small uh, mesquite tree that would that was broken and a limb uh, was off. Um, at that point, uh, I couldn't determine uh, if it was hit with a bullet or if an animal actually knocked it off because I did locate some animal hair uh, off to the side of where that branch was uh, located. I did bring this up to... Uh, Hold on a second. You're getting, you, you go way too far for me, way too far. So you do a search and you see a branch that looked like it was broken, right? That's correct. And at this stage, do you take it or do you take photos? 
Um, again, I, I told the other de um, detectives they came over and photographed the branch. Okay. You can leave the branch there. That's correct. All right. I want to stay on this metal detectors. Mm -hmm. So the 31st, the next day after the event, you guys have one metal detector out there. That's correct. Do you guys come back on the 1st, the next day? No, we come back on the 1st, and then at that time we have two metal detectors. I, I think I asked maybe a poorly worded question. The next day, the 1st, you guys come back again with a metal detector. That is correct. Two. That is correct. And you search what area? Um, at this point, I have a metal detector, uh, and we ex kind of expanded that original search from where the decedent was uh, past, so I probably went maybe 100 yards or more past uh, in a direction that I thought maybe the, the projectile would have gone or any type of any shell casings may have, may have been. Um, there's a small uh, wash, uh, maybe 100 yards a little more behind where that decedent was located. There was a, a, a bigger mesquite tree back there. I looked in, in that wash with a metal detector. I was even using my metal detector to uh, actually uh, scan the trees and the tree trunks to see if there's any type of uh, impact into the tree. And at that point, there was there was no evidence uh, of any shell casings. No, we did not locate any bullet or any evidence um, in and around and past uh, where the decedent was laying. How far back? As you were looking out from the house out, there's a victim's body, how far, continuing southbound, how far do you go with your metal detector in your search? Uh, again, I think I, I went maybe 100 yards past of where the decedent was, behind him, back towards, uh, towards the wash. And when you're back there, you're, you got your metal detector and you're doing your, your thing? That's correct. And then, are you also observing the environment? Yes. Do you see... Footprints, anything like that out there? Do um, you recall? No, uh, I don't see any uh, uh, shoe prints. Uh, I don't see any type of struggle. I don't see any layup spots where the grass would be laid down. Say maybe someone was laying down or, or hiding. I did not see any, uh, any of that. Give me one second, detective. Is this something I'm looking for? The photo is. Ms. Hunley is assisting me, Sergeant Bunting, after you, let's go back to the 31st. I jumped in time, I Tarantinoed it to the 1st, let's go back now to the 31st. After you did your metal detector on the 31st, what did you do, someone, you're with them, but what did you do after the metal detector? Uh, once we uh, searched uh, in and around the desert part uh, from uh, where the scene was, um, we then moved to the Kelly residence and began the, the search uh, of the Kelly residence itself, the interior. Interior. I forgot to ask, did you, on the on the metal detectors, on either the 31st or the 1st, did you also search the area between the victim and the house? I did on, on the 1st. Okay, I forgot to ask you that. So, staying with the metal detectors, you searched from the victim all the way to the house? Uh, that is correct. Including the paddock? Correct. There's there's two barbed wire fences uh, in between um, where the scene is in Mr. Kelly's residence. There is a uh, once you pass the, that little road I, I explained, you walk a little further, um, and there's a barbed wire fence. And it appears to be like a paddock or some type. It's not corral, but it's a paddock. And then a little bit further, and then there's a barbed wire fence that surrounds Mr. Kelly's residence. Anything come? Uh, no. So you go in to assist with the search warrant of the house? That is correct. And walk us through what you did in the search warrant of the house. The interior, we'll go to the exterior in a sec with the interior. <clears throat> correct. Um, I began uh, searching the, the garage area uh, with other, uh, other detectives. Uh, we moved from the garage uh, into the interior of the residence. Um, while I was uh, searching uh, off the garage, I can't remember what type of room that is, um, I overheard, uh, I think it was uh, Sergeant Flores, he was my sergeant at the, at the time, uh, who located uh, the AK-47 rifle in a different room, uh, hanging behind the door. And what was your responsibility, what, what did you do with the AK-47? Um, I, 
I went to where the deputies were located. Um, I noticed that uh, the magazine on, was still in the in the rifle. Um, I donned gloves because I already had gloves on, and I cleared that magazine. The magazine did have uh, live rounds in it, and also there was a uh, a live uh, 762 by 39, which is the the bullet for an AK-47, up in the chamber of the rifle. So it was it was ready to go. Would you recognize that rifle again? Yes. Detective Enzik, can you assist? Judge, with permission. Can we get 101? In the meantime, Detective, I'm going to show you. Do it. I'm going to show you just for us. I think it's already been admitted. It's already been admitted. I'm going to show you on the screen. Exhibit 34, 40, image 41, 93. Thank you, man. <laughs> you are. We're publishing, yeah. I'm sorry, with permission for the court, of course. Detective Bunting, I mean, Sergeant Bunting, is that the K-9 that you rec remember? I wasn't there when the no. came. But that was the that was the location of what uh, Detective Lane just showed me. Yes, and that's placard number one. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Miss Hunter. Detective, you can use the table over here. Is there opening that? Another question for you, Detective. I'm, I keep doing that to you. That's sorry, fine. I keep demoting you in some way. I'm sorry, Sergeant. That's fine. Sergeant, um, during your review of the property on the, se the second search warrant and the, the next day search warrant, did you find any backpacks of drugs? No. Do you find any any backpacks whatsoever? No. Do you find any guns laying around? No, besides the two that we removed from the vehicles. I'm talking about out in the field and... No. Okay. Sorry, Detective, can you hold that Exhibit 101, which has already been admitted to evidence, up for Detective, or Sergeant Bunting? Sergeant Bunting, do you recognize Exhibit 101? Uh, I do. Is that the weapon you found on the second search warrant, or someone else found and you helped clear? It is. Um, at the time when I found it, there was actually a uh, flashlight that was taped to the barrel. Thank you, Detective. On the, these eventually, some, at some point, DPS shows up. Do you know what day that was? DPS shows up? That was on the first. Okay, on the, let's go to the first now. DPS, oh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm missing part of the most important part of your testimony today. Thank you for that, that eyeball look at me. So you also, during the search, you also looked outside the house, right? Uh, correct. After uh, we did a search of the interior, located the weapon, um, I went back to the rear of the residence. Um, I went back to the rear of the residence because behind the residence, and I, I apologize, I don't know my desert plants, um, but there's a, there's a plant in the backyard that kind of uh, has these, uh, I don't even know what you call it, but it kind of comes up and it, it drapes down onto the desert or onto the ground. Um, I was drawn to that thinking that if something may be uh, in that bush or underneath that bush because it was, it was just kind of uh, out of the ordinary for, for me. Um, I looked uh, originally where the, the first shell casing was located. I looked around that bush. I looked in that bush, and then as I walked around, there was some other uh, prickly pear cactus or other desert cactus uh, in that same area. As I walked around in the front of it, if you want to call it, as I as I approached that bush, uh, I located uh, an additional shell casing, spent shell casing uh, on the ground. Um, well, before you get too far, I'm going to show you some photos. But who's with you when you're out there when you when you spot some shell casings? At that time, it was just me. 
Okay, did you get some assistance from other officers? That, that is correct. Once I found the first shell casing, I, I yelled over for uh, Detective Ains uh, to grab his camera. All right, I'm going to show you some photos. Exhibit 34, I'm going to show you image 4433. And just for us, I'm just going through the proper way here. I'm going to show you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, actually, I'm just going to approach you and show you directly. Commissioner, Commissioner. a moment to review those photos. The stickies are mine, Sergeant. Yes, that's fine. <clears throat> yes, I, I do recognize these photos. Are they fair and accurate representations of what you found with shell casings? Yes. Move to admit, Your Honor, Government Exhibit Exhibit 34, images 4433 to Exhibit 34, pages 4443 through 4458 are admitted. I think it's 4433. 4433? Yes, thank you. Exhibit 34, pages 4433 through 4458 are admitted. Permission to publish on it? I'm going to have Ms. Henley drive for me. I'm going to show you it's been state exhibit 34. I'm going to start referring to them just by their image number, 4433. What's that picture of, Sergeant? Uh, that picture shows uh, that bush that I was talking about that I, I don't know the name, it, it kind of drapes down onto the, 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 the ground there. Uh, this is located uh, right outside the, the back patio of Mr. Kelly's residence. Ms. Emily, if you can't do the matrix removal, is that, is that you? It's the matrix removal? Down the, whatever's happening down here. Don't worry about it, you can't do it. All right, okay. All right. don't worry about it. I'm going to show you the next image, 4444. I mean, 4434. Four, four, four. I did the same thing. 4434. Four. Sergeant, what, what, tell the jury what we're looking at. Uh, what you're looking at there is a, uh, a spent uh, AK-47 round or 7.62 by 3 I'm going to go Let's cut that. Let me just go old school. I'm not sure what's happening. That's fine. I'm not touching anything. I'll, just do, I'll do the MO. Going in and out. I'm going to show you government exhibit 4434. Sergeant, what are we looking at? Again, you're looking at a uh, spent uh, shell casing. And that's located what part of the house? Um, in that same area, but around that bush, um, right off of the patio. And when you look at that shell casing in 4434, is that an old one, new one? Uh, there's no weathering on it, it sort of appears new. And it's on top of the rocks. we we'll show you government exhibit image, image 4435. Same type of photo? Same type of photo, uh, same type of showcasing.
show you government exhibit image 4436. Again, uh, same photo in uh, empty spend shell casing. And we'll have a very good through every single one, but I'm going to show you government exhibit image 4437. And this is a overview. I can zoom in, but there is one. Yes. There's one right there, you see that one? That's correct. There's one down on the bottom of the page. Oh, I can't see that one. Yeah, you, you zoomed in. I'm zooming out. Right there? Yes, it's, it's blocked by that one on the bottom screen, but yes, that's one. Okay. This camera image 4437. I'm going to show you one with some placards on it 4438. That's correct. It indicates uh, eight spent, spent shell casings that were located. You, that's a standard practice to put placards next to the shell casings? Uh, that is correct, and we placed an arrow indicating uh, a, a possible north direction. Um, if, if you look, you see the sidewalk kind of do a, uh, uh, a right L. Uh, I would say the, the front door to that resident is just off of that picture. Um, at the top, uh, what you don't see, uh, just to the right, if you would continue down, um, there's another door that leads into the, uh, the back of the residence there. I will show you a better photo. I'll show you image 4440. Is that view? I do. And the, the image we're talking about, the back patio, do you see the patio? I do. You can see the, uh, the legs of the other detectives uh, standing on that back patio. And then right behind them, there's a, a door that leads into the residence. Just so we know, the first, that 4439 was a view going this way. And now this is a view of a different angle of that path where the showcase is, right? That is correct. All right. I'll show you a close up of one of the shell casings, 4442. Is that close up of your placard one? That is. Who's taking the photographs? I do believe it was uh, Sergeant Flores who took the, uh, the actual photographs. And this is same kind of picture, but there's a glove and someone's manipulating the. We're doing something with the run. Who's that glove belong to? That's actually my hand. It's my glove. Um, I used a uh, small twig uh, that I located there on the ground. You can see some by my by my knuckles uh, to put inside the the spent shell casing. Uh, so the picture indicates me uh, starting to pick up that shell casing and then with the assistance of uh, Detective Ainsa, uh, we then place that one shell casing into a, uh, uh, an evidence bag. Did you do that same same procedure with the, with the remaining uh, all eight spent shell casings, yes. I'm 
show you image 4452. You were talking to the jury about some plant that was like overhanging the, the gravel? That's correct. Is that the, like the... And that indicates that the plant in question that I was talking about, how it kind of drapes down onto the, the rocks and uh, that, that right there shows kind of the reason why I was looking in and around that um, that plant uh, in located one of the uh, spent shell cases. And some of that would be difficult to see, right? Uh, that is correct. I'm going to show you image 4454. That's a Closer lug up of a uh, showcasing number seven. That is correct. Kind of tucked under this plant. That is correct. You got, was it how many were there? There was a total of uh, eight spent shell cases. And what did you do with the eight shell cases? Uh, they were all um, submitted into evidence. hand gloves, sorry about that. I'm gonna have you open exhibit, I think one exhibit is 103 to 106, the envelope which should show 103 to 106. I'm gonna have you read open both of those and council can go there and take a look what I think they've been there before. You can open both of them. One should be 103 to 106, and one should be 107 to one of those out and to yourself open them up and take a look inside the, the big one they're all individually uh, uh, sure but just to yourself I want you to review them on your own Well, just, we're just going to do one at a time. I don't want to cross contaminate or cross pollinate here. So, 103 to 106, you were done reviewing those shell casings? Yes. Are those the same shell casings you found on scene? Uh, yes, they are. Can you move to admit, just so we can formally do this, Government Exhibit 103 to 106? No objection. 103 through 106 are admitted. Sergeant, can you just take one of those out just to remind the jury of what that looks like? Just uh, This is a 103. The uh, spent shell piece. And what's the, can you tell what brand or what type of weapon that goes to? Um, I recognize it as a uh, AK 47 round or a 7.62 by 39 round. It's kind of hard to see with the, the light that we have, but I recognize the, the round. All right. You can put that back in the, that individual envelope and put all three of the, oh, 
four of those back into the bigger envelope. And I want you to mirror the same process on Government Exhibit 107 to 110. Make or makes it 107 to 110. No objection. 107 through 110 are me. You can put those back in the envelope and put those back in the big envelope. After collecting the eight spent shell casings, did you do anything else at the house? Um, no, not that not that evening. Once we collected those, uh, we actually departed the, the Kelly Ranch. You also did, um, you were there for, DPS showed up to do a, a drone? Uh, that is correct, on, uh, on the 1st. The, so the next day now? The next day, which was Wednesday, uh, February 1st. To remind the jury, that's the day when you go back out with the metal detectors, right? No, that is correct. We went out. Uh, we were there uh, probably a little, little over an hour uh, periods before DPS arrived. And you were there with DPS. Did you help DPS out? I did. It was uh, Trooper Reyna that uh, arrived on scene. He's a drone operator. Um, upon his arrival, I walked him through the scene um, to show him kind of the layout and what we wanted to be photographed. And you got firearm expertise, right? That's correct. And you know about ejection patterns. I'm not going to quiz you on this, but you know about ejection patterns? Oh, correct. We, in the drone footage, there are cones. Do you know who put the cones out? I did. You put the cones out on the patio? That is correct. Based on what? Um, my theory of uh, ejection patterns being that that rifle uh, is a right-handed ejection, meaning when the, the bullet is fired, the extractor grabs that uh, spent shell casing and ejects it off to the right-hand side of that weapon system. And so you did your best guess about where the shoot, where the person who shot, where the spell ca spent shell casings landed, where the shooter would have been. Uh, that is correct. Is that precise science? Uh, no. But they're not. Do you remember a gazebo? Yes. The, the, the ejection pattern doesn't resemble someone shooting from the gazebo, does it? No. Um, my knowledge of that weapon system, even though I've not shot it a lot, um, I, again, it, it, it extracts and pulls it out to the right-hand side and slightly forward. So it was my best guess of if I would be standing right here, uh, where those shell casings were, that was just the uh, approximate guess that I did. You also looked at, in, in this case, you were tasked with looking at Border Patrol video. Uh, that is correct. And do you know how many discs of video that you looked at? Uh, it was a total of uh, five uh, surveillance discs uh, on two different occasions. And did other officers, detectives, were they also tasked with their own set of discs? Uh, that is correct. So there's a lot of drone, not drone, but a lot of Border Patrol surveillance videos, right? Uh, correct. I don't know what the total number, but yes. Live hours? Um, yes. And do you remember the drone foot? I keep saying drones, strike that. The Border Patrol surveillance video. You reviewed it before court today, right? 
That is correct. And the view, do you remember what the view was? What property? Yes, it was, well, the, it was the, the desert view from wherever those cameras were located. Sure, but do you see any, any property distinction, any property belonging to George Kelly? Yes, we do. Uh, there's two footage that we saw, um, one of uh, a, what's called an infrared, it's a black and white image, um, where you see a male subject and two animals uh, walking towards that pump house. I'm familiar with that pump house. Uh, the second video was in color, uh, indicating the, that same image. And you see, do you see other people arriving on scene? on the video? That is correct. Uh, later, uh, you do see uh, other de uh, deputies arriving in their marked units. And so the videos you reviewed showed Border Patrol and SO arriving and also George Kelly and his dogs. That is correct. There's a part of the video where you see someone else running, right? Not running, he's walking. Walking. Um, where are they walking towards? Uh, they're walking on a hillside. Um, I couldn't I couldn't tell you where that image was actually located because it's it's kind of zoomed into that male subject in the desert around so there's no nothing in the distance to indicate where that person was. And it's there's Border Patrol and SO on scene, right? That is correct. All right. And then did you ever see anyone running towards the border wall? No, I did not see anybody running. And then we're going to talk about this tree thing real quick. Um, I'm going to show exhibit 137 and 137.1. Permission to approach, right? I think you can do two things at once. I'm going to ask you to open Exhibit 137 mm -hmm. and 137.1. I think they're both inside that box. Okay. Um, as you're doing that, I want to ask you, at some point, someone's at, at, tasked you with the job of collecting the tree branch. A tree branch, right? That is correct. Do you remember what time of year that was? Uh, that was in August. August. Do you know who tasked you with that, that job? Uh, we received information from the county attorney's office. Uh, to go back uh, and retrieve that branch that I originally found uh, on the, the 31st. And that information came down from, I guess, one of the experts. I do not know his name, but one of the experts requested us to go back out and, and uh, collect that tree. So you go back out. Do you remember who who's with you when you go back out? Uh, it was myself, uh, Detective Barba, and at the time, Sergeant Flores. And I can't remember if there was a deputy out there or not. Okay. Go ahead and open that box. I, I, I want you to keep those things in the bag. There should be a clear bag in there, Sergeant. Don't, don't pull it up, I just want you to see if you were, no, no, don't pull it down. <laughs> do you recognize those two items? I do. Are those, what, what are those? Uh, they're cut pieces of the tree in question. Your Honor, I move to admit Government Exhibit 137 and 137.1 into evidence. No objection. 137 and 137.1 are admitted. And Detective, can move to have him do the runway showing with the jury? Assume that it be published to the jury. I'm sorry, published to the jury. Both of them at the same time? Yeah, both of them. Take both of them and just slowly walk so the jury can see the, the items. Surgeon.
You can put those in the box too, Sergeant. I think earlier you testified that you you saw some possible animal hair on those on that branch, right? It wasn't on the branch, it was actually off to the side on the ground. And there was a horse and a couple of cows at the time in the area uh, around where that, that branch was located. You know what kind of, do you remember the horse? What I remember like? the horse. What it looked like? It was, an, it was an older horse. It was brownish, darker, not dark, dark brown, but a kind of like a reddish brown in color horse, older. That's all the questions I had, Your Honor. Thank you. Cross examination. Hold on. I'll look at you for a second. Sorry, Grant, just a couple of follow up before I conclude. And I may have missed it, but do we have foundation as to when these branches were removed? If I missed it, I thought. I'm sorry. August 2nd of 23. It was under search warrant uh, 23052. notice members of the jury that it's only one lawyer from each side can examine the witness um, so they look to co-counsel before they finish on either side to see if the other counsel has any questions it's just one lawyer one witness we don't allow them to tag team so that's why they do it Thank you, ma'am. I'm going to show you Government Exhibit 121, just for, just so we can do this. Things have already been admitted, I'll publish. Do you recognize that photo? I do. It's from the drone footage. Just to remind everyone, there's cones situated kind of dead center. That's correct. And those are the cones you're referring to? That is correct. And the casings, just so we understand, the casings are the where? Ca the casing 22JA through 29, uh, circled in yellow, are the ones that I located. Uh, the blue uh, 1JA uh, was the one shell casing uh, that was recovered the, the previous night. And 22J... Excuse me a second, I'm sorry. The clerk informs me that this exhibit has not been admitted. It was part of the... I'm sorry. Let's do this the right way. Do you recognize that photograph? I do. We move to admit, Your Honor, you have exhibit 121? No. 121 is admitted. So I think you're right. I assume too much. Sorry about that, Sergeant. So the the blue circle is the first showcasing 1JA? That is correct. 
And then in the yellow circle is the other ones, 22 through 29 JA? That is correct. And those correspond with exhibits 103 to 110? That, that is correct. Those are the ones you just looked at, right? Yes. And those are the ones you put place cards on? Yes, the one circled in yellow. And did you also, who's responsible for putting cones around where the victim's body was located? Do you recall? I don't recall. I, I, I think I was with uh, Tuparena at the time. I don't remember if I did it or if Tuparena did, but I was, I was present when those cones were, were placed. One of you two did it. That is correct. And did someone tell you where the body was at? No, due to the stain on the ground, I was still able to locate where the seat was laying. Okay, based upon the physical evidence on scene, you put the cones around that, and that's where the body was. That is correct. That's all the questions I have, Your Honor. Very well, cross examination. Thank you. Just want to talk a little bit about the metal detecting that you did. You said that you went, would it be south of the body or east of the body towards the wash? That is correct. I'll say east. Okay, it, towards the ravine that's on the far side of where the body was located, correct? That is correct. So that's moving away from the house, right? Yes. And then you also moved towards the house through those barbed wire fences looking for a bullet, correct? That is correct. And even up on the trees, all in that <coughs> pathway, correct? Uh, that is correct, on both sides. On both the smaller sides? smaller trees were harder, but the bigger trees, yes. So that's generally an area that goes east to west, right? That's the, the path that you covered, essentially? Yes. Did you cover any other paths, like north, south, or search in any other directions besides those two? Yes, I did. Um, behind where the scene was, back to uh, that ravine, um, I did go uh, slightly north uh, to, to cover uh, a wider swath. And again, probably went maybe 100 yards or more. Uh, behind to where that ravine is, and then uh, slightly north, and then uh, south, if you want to say south. Yeah, you say slightly north and slightly south. Is that slightly north and south in that general east-west path that you're covering? That is correct. Did you ever go directly north from where the body was located, for example, or directly south? <coughs> we did. We uh, actually went uh, all the way to the end of where uh, the first barbed wire fence is, um, surrounding Mr. Kelly's branch, and again we covered that whole area uh, between uh, the paddock uh, and then back to where the scene was laying. So was there, is it fair to say then that you did sort of a radius around where the body was located? Did you search that entire radius or did you limit yourself? No, we I would say it's in the immediate area around um, 100 yards, again, a little more behind, uh, further north. In we every tried. direction then? We long? tried, yes. Okay. And you didn't find any evidence of any bullets in that search, right? We did not find any evidence of any bullets or any spent shell casings uh, besides the eight that I located. Okay. And you stood on the patio, obviously, of Mr. Kelly's property, right? Yes. And you were able to look through that mesquite thicket, essentially correct? That Towards correct. where the body was located, right? Yes. And you also stood out where the body is located, correct? Yes. And you looked back towards the house also, correct? Yes. Could you just describe that line of sight for the jury? Um, again, uh, standing from uh, the back patio of Mr. Kelly's residence, um, looking out to where the decedent is, um, there is a covered gazebo uh, right off the patio behind his house. From there, there's some uh, some bigger, like thicker mesquite trees. Um, past the first barbed wire fence in that paddock, uh, there's some smaller uh, mesquite trees. Um, some thicker areas than others, or some spaces in between. Uh, again, this is desert, so at that time in January, everything's dead. There's no leaves on the on the trees. Uh, the grass is brown. Um, there is a kind of like opening um, prior to where the decedent is, and uh, the final resting of the decedent is, is located right, right near a tree. So just to 
to sum that up, there's a lot of stuff in between the patio and where the body is located, right? That is correct. There's trees, right? I just said that, yes. And there's different obstacles, like a smoker, for example, right? Did you see a smoker Smoke. out on the back? Um, behind the gazebo, uh, there is a, I think, I, I don't know if you want to call it a smoker or a fire pit or something, I guess. And the gazebo's out there as well, right? Yes. And um, there are wood piles also, right? Did you notice those? Those are small. But there are wood piles out there in between? Correct. Okay. And you searched through that whole area with metal detectors, and you didn't find any evidence of any bullets passing through that thicket, correct? Besides the broken tree, and again, I can't confirm if that was actually broken by a bullet or by the animal. Um, that's the only thing I located. And I looked uh, on both sides of the trees with the metal detector on the bigger trees, giving any benefit of doubt of, of bullets coming towards Mr. Kelly. Okay, so you found no evidence then of bullets no. going through there? Okay. I just want to talk about the shell casings that you located near the patio. You located those on the second the second day, or this was the during the second search of the property, correct? Correct, on the 31st. So other investigators had been out there on the 30th and they'd searched the property, right? I don't want to assume whatever, I wasn't there. Okay, but those shell casings were not located until you located them on the 31st, right? That is correct. Okay, and those were just out in plain view, right? Yes, sir. You didn't need a metal detector to find them, No, right? I did not. I found them in plain view. You just looked on the ground and there they were, right? Yes. Those were next to a prickly pear cactus, correct? They were in front, yes. Okay. You talked about shell casing, ejection, and things like that. You put the cones where was your best guess that somebody might be standing, right? That is correct. But that's just a guess, right? With my knowledge, yes. It was it was left of where those shell casings were located with a little bit of distance from where uh, those cones were to where they were actually located on the ground. And you obviously agree that while shell casings are ejected, they can bounce off of things if there are things around. That is correct. Like that prickly pear cactus, for example, right? Yes, that and rocks. Right. Did you describe, do any measurements or positioning to precisely locate all of those shell casings? I did not. Do you know if anybody did that? I, again, I don't want to pursue, but I, I did not do that. And in order to basically memorialize what you found, you you guys took pictures of the shell casings, right? That is correct. You put those placards down by each one that you found, right? Correct. And then that was just photographed from a number of different angles, right? That is correct. And then after you took those photographs, you picked up the shell casings, correct? Yes, once they were photographed, and then again photographed as we were picking them up, we picked them up and put them back. So you didn't measure the distance between each shell casing or anything like that, right? No, I did not. Didn't get any precise coordinates or anything to show exactly where they were, right? I didn't. I do not know if anybody else did any type of GPS. Okay. Did it, was anyone there who had GPS while you located and picked up these shell casings? Again, I don't want to presume what someone else had or didn't have. I did not have and I did not do that. Okay. And you saw the shell casings, discovered them. And then you were there the entire time they were being photographed and then picked up, right? That is correct. So you observed the discovery and the documentation and the collection of the shell casings, right? That is correct. And you didn't observe any taking of precise measurements? No. Okay. I want to go back a little bit to the distance between those shell casings and where the body was eventually located. You would agree it's difficult to see a person if you're standing on the patio and that person is standing out where the body was located, right? Difficult to see, no. Not, it's not difficult to see, you don't think? Well, you got to remember in January there was no leaves on the tree. There was the grass that was only maybe a foot high, so you could see uh, through, that, through those trees. Did you have Detective Barba go stand out there at some point? At some point, yes. I think we did take a photograph. I did not take it, but a photograph was taken. And you were standing back by the patio and looking through to see Detective Barber, right? That is correct. He was wearing black, right? A black and tan, yes. And he was just standing out there, just standing there, correct? 
tricks, but I do remember right, he was standing where the deceit was uh, discovered. So he wasn't trying to hide, right? No. And he obviously wasn't wearing camouflage or anything, right? That is correct. And you say that you can see this from the patio. What about from inside the house? I did not look from inside the house. I, I was on the outside uh, looking at where the second part was. That's what you're referring to. Were you in the house at any point? I was. And so you know what the kitchen and living room area of that house looks like, right? Uh, vaguely. And you'd have to look out through some windows to see out into this area, correct? Yes, there are a couple windows on the back patio uh, by, the, by that back door. Did you ever attempt to look out through those windows to see if you could observe something at that distance from the house? I did not. Do you know if anybody did that? I do not know. what's been 